Hello, hello, Thomas here, and uh, I wish everyone a wonderful Labor Day. This is the third iteration of server-side purchase events um, and what they can do for you. It's a big buzz topic and subject in the Facebook groups. And um, yeah, so we'll talk about what it actually helps with and how it works. Server-side pixel events, server-side attribution, and server-side API. Big buzz on Facebook, uh, particularly since so many things are changing on Facebook and the big war that is going on between Apple and Facebook has even Mark Zuckerberg concerned about the revenue that is coming in from uh, Facebook ads on certain channels. So just uh, by way, as a way of doing a quick recap of what we've talked about in the two last um, streams, live streams, <clears throat> we've done, we've taken a closer look at the difference between uh, browser events, that's over here on the left side, and server side events, right? So just as a quick recap, the browser side events are, let me zoom in here a little bit, the browser side events are firing in the user's browser on iPhones, you know, Chrome browsers, any any browser that the user is using to place the order, these events are firing right here, <clears throat> and they have these problems that uh, all kinds of preferences or gadgets that are running in the browser may be suppressing the pixel events and preventing them from getting through to the uh, actual destination on Facebook. <clears throat> so I guess. I just noticed I don't have my, my good microphone on. That's a little bit too bad, but I'm not going to change that right now. I hope the audio is good enough for you to understand me anyway. So the result of all these problems that can happen in the browser events is that you can be missing some events. And of course, missing events are also going to be miss, missing from the reporting. Now, after the user completes the purchase, uh, the order comes into Shopify, and then Shopify notifies Trackify that there is a new order. And at that time, Trackify is generating a server-side event. So it's sending an event, a conversion event, via the same Facebook pixel to Facebook directly from our server to Facebook server. So this is independent of the user's browser. And therefore, this eliminates a whole bunch of problems that come uh, in to the browser events when they're going on the browser. Uh, as a result, absolutely all events are received by Facebook. All events that, that, um, that are a conversion event for an order getting, are actually getting into Facebook. They're also getting deduplicated because what we assume here in general is that the browser events are firing for about 90% of all sales of all conversions, uh, purchase conversions, but the server side events are going to back them up. And so in case anything goes amiss on the browser, the server side event pitches in. So that means that for 90% of the events, or maybe a little less or maybe a little bit more, we're actually, actually expecting them to be duplicated between the browser events and the server events. So we have to make sure that they're getting deduplicated on Facebook's end uh, when they're getting there. Otherwise, you're going to get everything duplicated and, and everything is, is going to be a big mess if you don't do that. All right, so that is also uh, considered, that is Im implemented in the Trackify server-side events. So you have full deduplication between browser events and server events, as well as if, if there should be multiple server events or if for some reason multiple browser events would come in for the same uh, purchase, they would also be deduplicated. So deduplicated means they're not going to show up twice or more than once be between events that fire for the same conversion. They're not going to show up twice in your attribution in as manager. And that's the whole goal, right? Is that we want to improve the attribution for in ads manager for all these events that we're sending. So the cool thing that we're getting as a kind of like an added bonus, so if it was up to here, it would already be pretty darn cool, but the awesome added bonus that we're getting is 
that we're actually not only firing server-side purchase events for all purchases that are made through the user's browser, but we're also firing any events that have uh, made in other sales channels, for example, eBay. If you have a sales channel on eBay and then the order is being put into Shopify once it's placed on eBay or on Amazon, that order is going to get a server-side API purchase event. Same thing for manual entered orders, right? If you have uh, a team that is following up with phone, uh, phone calls on, let's say, abandoned cards, or even if you have just a phone number listed on your order page, you'll notice that you actually sometimes get calls that place and finalize orders um, via the phone. And those can be manually entered orders. Um, and when they're man manually entered, of course, there's no user in the browser. And therefore, you would be missing out on these events because there are no browser purchase events fired for these orders. But the service side events are generated anyway. And then also that goes for recurring orders as well. So if you have something going on like recard um, or um, you know anything that you charge uh, recurring uh, orders, like let's say you have um, you know whatever uh, something that is fulfilled on a monthly basis, and the order is uh, is charged as a new order being put in every month for the record for the recurring shipment or the recurring charge then that order will also show up in the server-side events. And uh, a lot of times, they can actually still get attributed to uh, Facebook ads and actually show up in Ads Manager. And not only that, attribution is not the only thing where server-side events come in, but also with regards to audience building. So you could technically build um, an audience for recurring orders only and uh, use that audience for retargeting or build a lookalike audience from that and use that for uh, cold traffic ads, right? With a lookalike audience that consists only of users that have uh, placed a recurring order. That would be an awesome audience to try out. All right, so that's that part. Then in the second uh, iteration, we, we talked about, uh, I showed you what this actually looks like and how the events come into the test tool here in your events manager. And uh, as you can see here, this is basically the entire funnel that I'm, I'm testing from the, um, you know, from like a collections page, then a product page. Then I added the product to the card and looked at the card page. Then uh, the initiate checkout fired when I went from the card page to the checkout page. And then I got this event right here, which is the browser event for that purchase. And then a few minutes later, I got this one here, which is the server side event. It shows here that it's received from the server, and it shows that it's the same event ID as the browser event. And that's how um, uh, Facebook can then go ahead and deduplicate that, right? So that's kind of all in the way of recap of what we've gone through, what we've gone over in the past two uh, Facebook Lives here. So let's go on now for today. I promised you I wanted to show you some actual results and how what that looks like uh, when you actually run this live. And I have recorded a little bit of a sample result here from a shop that has been running on the server-side events, server-side purchase events in Trackify for the past 30 days. And I'm going to play it. And as we play, I can comment on it. So what we have here is, this is in the Events Manager. You can see here, this is the Event Overview uh, list. And you can see here, when you scroll down to where the purchase event is, you can see its, uh, its sources are browser and server, right? All the other events only have browser events as a source. And uh, the purchase events here is showing browser and server as a source. And uh, this number here is like a quality score regarding the advanced matching or the matchability of events. An 8.5 out of 10 is actually really, really high. That's an, an awesome, uh, awesome score. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in, in just a minute, a little bit more. Uh, but first here, let's 
let's see. So when you hover, you basically have these two lines here. The blue line is the browser events, and the green line is the server events. Um, they're following two different scales. There's a scale here on the left side for the browser events, and a scale on the right side for the server events. So um, they are not related to each other. You can basically just see when they go up and down. But um, the green line being below the blue line does not mean that there are generally fewer server events than browser events. Um, and if you so, if you hover over this line like this, and you kind of go from one node in the line to to the next, you can see the ratio here: which events were fired. In this case, for example, 45 browser events were received and 60 server events were received. You can see here. Um, all 45 browser events were counted, and on the server side, uh, there were 46 events that were deduplicated and 14 events that were processed. So that means in this case, you had the benefit of 14 additional events in addition to the ones that were received by the browser. Just you know, hover over a little bit more here. And the ratios here can kind of vary and, and uh, you know, show different numbers at different times. So here, for example, we have 54 browser events. Four of them were deduplicated. And then on the server side, there were 100 were received. 64 were deduplicated and 36 additional were processed. Now, you know, you might ask, well, why, is, why are there 64? deduplicated if only 54 were sent in the browser. Well, maybe there were 10 that were sent twice on the server side, right? That's a possibility. So this is, but this is a very cool way to, you know, see what's going on and where the browser events are, where the server events are. This is another thing here that I wanted to highlight. You can see here that the advanced matching activity has in this case now led to a 20% higher attributed uh, conversions uh, ratio than if, if you were running without advanced matching. So advanced matching activity kind of combines the advanced matching um, values that are sent with the browser event with the, with the way that the server events are matching, right? The server events are essentially using a similar mechanism to match the events to Facebook users as what is known as advanced matching data in the browser events. So that's why the, the, they are compounded here on, on this value when it says 20% higher attribution conversion. So that's awesome. And uh, here you can see also 99% of your purchase events are receiving all these advanced matching pieces. So that's, that's awesome too. You can see advanced matching in combination with the server side events are really having a great e effect on uh, Facebook being able to recognize your Facebook users. And that is important for both features of the Facebook pixel that are the essential features, which, uh, which are number one, of course, attribution, you know, which pixel event, which conversion can be attributed to a paid ad. And then the second really important part to the Facebook pixel event is of course, audience building and that's important for retargeting and also for audience leveraging by way of building lookalike audiences that are based on custom audiences right so for for all of these features the first thing that has to happen is that facebook is able to identify the facebook user who has triggered that specific conversion that uh, that we're talking about and then based on that, you can build the custom audience and you can use the custom audience to retarget those people who have taken that specific uh, action. Or you can also use that to exclude buyers from cold traffic ads or from retargeting ads or from the ads that are retargeting maybe you know, the second, third, fourth round of retargeting ads that are offering a coupon code. Well, if you had a buyer buy that item without the coupon code you don't want them to get the ads that are offering the coupon code you know three hours after they already purchased so in that case that's a smart idea to build this audience and eliminate it from the retargeting ad excluding it uh, and that's also a good application good use of custom audiences and then like i mentioned the the leverage use is that you use that same custom audience then to build lookalike audiences 
so that you can run cold traffic ads to people, to users on Facebook that are most similar to the people in the actual custom audience. Okay, so now the really cool thing here, I think that was it for, for this screen. And then I, I went over to the next screen here and show, showing you some, some results here on the actual ads. Um, so this here is a 30-day screenshot. Uh, there are 30-day results and they're comparing, the results are compared with the, with the 30 days prior to that. So roughly, this is actually not quite accurate. Um, we have uh, server-side purchase events now running uh, for a little more than 30 days, actually going on 40 days. And so actually, the, so they're, the primary report um, date, date range is the last 30 days. And then I selected compare add, and you can see here, for example, in this column right here, you can see that um, that's the comparison time period. <clears throat> okay, so you can see here um, in in those uh, popped open columns, right? I don't know if you're familiar with that. When you're when you're comparing different date ranges of report, you can pop this open, and for example, for results. You see the uh, the current reporting time frame, so that's the last 30 days, and then you can next to that you can see um, the previous the comparison period, which in this case is the previous 30 days before that, and then you can see here the change in uh, total numbers, and you can see the change in percent uh, as well. So, so uh, and I've kind of popped this open here for the results. So that's the purchase counts. So in the last 30-day uh, period, there were 2,500 purchases attributed, uh, almost 500 more than in the previous 30 days. And that's an increase of almost 24% right here. And uh, over here, we can see the cost per result has dropped pretty dramatically, right? In the current um, last 30 days with server-side events, the cost per result, the cost per purchase in this case, was um, $24. And in a previous 30-day period, it was almost $32, which is a drop of almost 25% in the cost. So, and this is um, a typical result uh, for adding server-side events to your reporting. Really, all you need to do this here, you can see this pixel is already enabled. When the pixel is enabled for server-side API, you can see the uh, the dot here is green, and I'm in the Pixel Engine in Trackify. And um, you can simply, you can enable it for a master pixel uh, if you have one already inserted and server side API is not enabled. You can enable it by clicking on Edit and just simply check or uncheck this box, and that toggles the server side status. So I should have probably started that this way because now the server side API uh, is showing gray, and that means. It's not enabled for this pixel. So to enable it, you open it for edit and check the box and then update. Now, one thing that is really, really important for, um, for several features, for several functions in Trackify, but also for the server-side API events, is that you have something entered in your notification settings over here, right? So here, you want to make sure that you have an email that is a good email. I'm just going to put my Gmail address in here. And uh, you want to have that enabled, and you want to check all the token types, uh, all the access token types that you're using um, for um, notification. So what this means is when, in the case, in the event that an access token expires, uh, we send you an email automatically through the system so that you can come back into the Trackify user interface and renew the token so that you don't miss out on server-side events, right? So these tokens expire very, very rarely. Basically, they expire only if you change your, your Facebook account password. But um, if that happens or, you know, if uh, Facebook makes you change your password or something like that happens, then the token is no longer good. And then you need to come in and uh, just simply renew the token. It's an automated process. You just have to be present in the Trackify user interface. And then everything else goes from there. 
Cool. So make sure that that's the case. The uh, server side API purchase events are currently a feature. Uh, well, they're currently enabled for the business plan and up. But for the business plan, this is uh, just a, a trial period, a test period. Uh, we will eventually um, limit that to marketer plans. It's actually a really awesome feature that takes quite a bit of resources. So it actually costs us money uh, to run and offer this feature. And uh, that's why we cannot uh, long-term offer this for the less expensive plans on Trackify. But you will see once you try it, even if you try it in business right now, you will absolutely see that it's totally worth it because it's just uh, so so much better, so much improving your results and and uh, you know, getting you really visible and tangible improvements over um, over not using them, over not using service side events. And uh, there you go. And you know, the, so Trackify is the only app, the first app, and even the only implementation at all. It uses server-side events. Shopify doesn't use it, and uh, there's uh, no way to uh, to integrate it there, other than uh, using Trackify or other than using you know complicated manual ways to uh, to enable them. So the integration settings, right? We used to have server-side purchase events support via Zapier, and that's also an interesting an interesting case. We have you know shared Zap and big instructions here on how to set this up and everything like that. But this is no longer needed, so you don't need to set up any of this. Or if you have previously set this up, you can just take it down, and save a bunch of money because Zap. Uh, running zaps on any significant amount of purchase events is actually a pretty expensive uh, thing. And so we had some users uh, complain about that, that, that the zaps were getting too expensive. <laughs> and uh, so I'm happy to report that the zaps are no longer needed. It's a deprecated uh, integration. Here's a big note here that you don't need to implement this. So just go to the master pixels in the pixel engine and uh, enable that like I showed you, and nothing else, no other setup is needed. OK, cool. That's it. I don't see any new questions. So um, I'm going to cut this uh, server-side installment off at this point right here. Uh, we'll have a webinar uh, coming up about this uh, server-side topic uh, coming on Thursday. We're going to do it on Thursday. And until then, I might uh, run some more Facebook Lives about the topic um, just to field some questions, see if you guys have any questions, give you any updates that we have in the user interface in the meantime. Until then, I wish you an awesome Labor Day, and I'll see you soon. This is Thomas Barkley signing off. Take care.